Dental Odontomas by Andrew, Matt, Jordan, Zach, and Wee. Odontomas are defined as benign odontogenic tumors characterized by slow, non-aggressive growth. They are considered hamartomas, meaning that they are composed of various dental tissues arising from both ectodermal and mesenchymal tissue origin. They are composed of many dental tissues, including enamel, dentin, cementum, and sometimes pulp. The etiology of odontomas is relatively still unknown. However, trauma and infection at the site of lesion is thought to be an ideal condition for its appearance. Odontomas are classified into two distinct forms, complex and compound. Complex odontomas are seen radiographically as a somewhat homogeneous mass of calcified tissue. Unlike the compound form, complex odontomas are more frequently found in the mandible. Compound odontomas are characterized as enamel, dentin, and cementum appearing as distinct dental tissue. Radiographically, they appear as several deformed tooth-like structures. Compound odontomas are more commonly found in the anterior maxilla. They are the most common form of odontomas as they are twice more common than the complex form. Clinically, odontomas are equally distributed between males and females. They can occur at virtually any age. However, diagnosis is most frequent in the second decade with an average age of diagnosis around 28 years old. Overall, odontomas are more common in the mandible. Approximately 63% of complex odontomas occur in the posterior mandible, while 33% of compound odontomas occur in the anterior maxilla. Typically, odontomas are asymptomatic and both the compound and complex forms are slow growing. The presence of an odontoma will often cause alterations in the eruption of the primary or permanent dentition. While very uncommon, it is possible for an odontoma to erupt through the oral mucosa, as illustrated in this photo. When this does occur, it may be associated with pain, inflammation, or infection with suppuration. Again, this is very rare, and as mentioned before, odontomas are typically asymptomatic. Odontomas typically go unnoticed until a patient has routine radiographs taken in a dental office. As stated earlier, there are two subtypes of odontomas, and these subtypes are differentiated based off of their radiographic appearance. The first subtype is a complex odontoma, which appears as an irregular radiopacity with no resemblance to teeth. The second subtype is a compound odontoma. A compound odontoma has multiple radiopacities clustered together that resemble small teeth radiographically. The best means for diagnosing an odontoma is either by pantomograph or cone beam CT. Upon diagnosing an odontoma, a dental professional will look at the patient's radiograph for a well-defined border with a radiolucent rim at the periphery. The internal structure will have a mixture of radiopacity and radiolucency. The radiopacity may be as much as the adjacent teeth. Odontomas can have several negative effects for the patient. It can result in impaction of teeth, delayed eruption of teeth, cortical plate thinning, and rarely may cause cortical bone expansion if large enough. On the left, we can see a cone beam CT image of a compound odontoma viewed in the coronal cross section. Note that it is preventing the eruption of tooth number five. On the right, there is a pantomograph of a complex odontoma that has caused impaction of tooth number 31. Note that the odontoma has likely erupted into the oral cavity as it is at the plane of occlusion and tooth number 32 is absent. Several lesions of the oral cavity may mimic the appearance of an odontoma and it is important to understand the differences between these lesions in order to deliver the right diagnosis. Mature periapical cemento-osseous dysplasia, PCOD, appears similar to an odontoma because of its mixed density on a radiograph and the appearance of a radiolucent rim. However, clinically, 
PCOD is more common in middle-aged African-American and Asian-American females, whereas odontomas occur in younger age groups without a sex predilection. PCOD is also often more found at the apex of mandibular incisors. Both are asymptomatic, however, odontomas may also be associated with impacted teeth. Histologically, odontomas may have dented, enamel, and tooth-like structures not seen in PCOD. PCOD tends to display irregular trabeculae of bone, fibrous connective tissue, and cementum. Another differential is idiopathic osteosclerosis, which appears similar radiographically to a complex odontoma. Both may appear as well-defined radiopacities, commonly associated with teeth. However, osteosclerosis does not associate with tooth impaction, tooth displacement, and it also lacks a radiolucent rim. Ameloblastic fibroodontoma is another mixed odontogenic tumor that behaves very similar to an odontoma. In fact, the World Health Organization describes ameloblastic fibromas, ameloblastic fibroodontomas, and complex odontomas as progressive stages of the same benign lesion. Both have mixed radiolucency, a radiolucent rim, odontogenic tissues, and may be associated with tooth displacement. Also, both are found in younger age groups. Likely, a biopsy is needed to differentiate the two because of their clinical and radiographic features being nearly identical. One clue to differentiate the two may be that AFO tends to act more cancerously and recur more often. Here is a pantomograph image of an AFO in the maxillary right quadrant, displacing the developing tooth number two. Treatment for odontomas is usually done if they cause symptoms such as pain or swelling or interfere with the normal eruption of teeth. This would typically be accomplished by an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. The treatment of choice is conservative surgical enucleation with an excellent prognosis. Because odontomas are often associated with uninterrupted teeth, the clinician may also choose to extract the associated tooth when removing the odontoma if the tooth is not developing properly. In certain cases, additional treatment may be necessary. Orthodontic treatment may be utilized to move an impacted permanent tooth to its normal position, depending on the size and location of the lesion, or whether the patient may need further treatment, such as implants, a bone graft may be placed. Furthermore, if the clinician extracted the associated permanent tooth, then they will have to discuss with the patient replacement options. An early diagnosis of odontomas allows the adoption of a less complex and expensive treatment, as well as improve the treatment outcome. Ideally, odontomas should be removed when the permanent teeth adjacent to the lesion exhibit about one half of their root development. This ensures safety of the normal permanent teeth and prevents the interference with their eruption. Our references include the following. Our image citations include the following. Thank you.